Hello and welcome back to Assetto Corsa for the continuation of the Nordschleifer Challenge. Now, we have so far taken three cars out in this challenge. The Alfa Romeo Mito, the KTM Crossbow, or Crossbow R should I say, and the Fiat 500 at Bath. The fourth car I'm going to be taking out, as you can see on screen, is going to be the BMW M3 Evolution 3, the E30, the original BMW M3. I believe this version is from 1990, so three or four years after production of the M3 started. As I said, this is the Evo 3, so it does have a little bit more power, a little bit, a little bit better top speed, some better handling characteristics so on and so forth, a, a larger engine, I believe uh, the original was 2 litres, this is a 2.5 litre engine and this produces around about 235 brake horsepower as opposed to 198 on the original M3, so we're looking at 235 brake horsepower which means that this car should be able to do a 0-60 to in about 6 seconds, so this is going to be rather interesting, rear wheel drive vehicle inline four engine not our v6s or v8s or v10s or anything like that just a inline four engine producing all of that power um this is going to be interesting this is going to be very very interesting but it is naturally aspirated so we should have none of that classic 80s and 90s turbo lag so make sure you stay tuned for a couple of laps of me trying to get this car around the Nordschleife, see what kind of lap time we can get. I think this is going to be faster than the Alfa Romeo, but by how much is the question? I'm thinking maybe 30 seconds? I'm thinking about 30 seconds faster around the lap, so we'll have to see. And as usual, for those Patreon supporters, you are going to see some of the practice laps that are going to come straight off this intro for you guys as you see me spin and crash and try to get used to the car and make sure that I have all my facts straight and everything like that. So without further ado, I shall start driving and you, you guys will see me after a, a couple of laps, but for you it will only be a couple of seconds. So here we go. Okay, I've had my uh, couple of practice laps, or this is the end of my second practice lap, so here we go. You can see a number of purples coming up on the on the timing screen, on the performance delta. Um, you can also see a lot of red, that's because I've stopped and I've had a few spins. You can see the black, black spots where I've gone extremely, extremely slow. I have to say that this car is a... it's amazingly good to drive. It really, really is amazingly good to drive. It's a little bit slower than I thought it might be for, in terms of, for the lap times in this, in this challenge. I thought it might be 25 to 30 seconds faster than, than the Fiat 500. I, I think it might not be quite as quick as I thought it is, but, and this is where it doesn't really matter. This car is so much better to drive than the Fiat 500. The rear wheel drive, front engine rear wheel drive nature of this car naturally aspirated. It's BMW and BMW have done or did when they made this car a fantastic job with this car. Absolutely fantastic. Um, you're looking at 177 foot-pounds of torque at about 4,250 RPM and 7, 000, at 7,000 RPM you've got your maximum power of 235 brake horsepower. Just... It's just great. The, the gearing is sublime on this car. It's perfectly poised, it's perfectly tuned. The suspension is great on this car. It's just everything about this car is exactly what you would want from a fast BMW. It's everything you would want 
from a fast BMW as I mess up that heaven. Funnily enough, on the two previous laps, I did something completely different on that hairpin. You can tell this car is a real-wheel drive, but it has a lot of grip, which makes it fantastic again to drive. What you really have to be aware of is when you're downshifting, just make sure that you, you're not you're not being the car. Um, on your downshifts because if you if you downshift when you're going into a corner and you just happen to be slightly too high in the rev range the back of the car obviously the rear wheels do like to do like to spin in fact you can just see right there what the rear wheels are like and what the what the driving characteristics of this car are, or if of this car is sorry if you have not driven this car before in the set of Corsa, I 100% recommend that I've just messed that map up. I 100% recommend that you drive this car uh, in a set of Corsa. This could be the, one of the best cars you ever drive in a set of Corsa. Um, and obviously, uh, we're not going to get a chance to drive a car like this in, in real life. That's completely messed that up. That's fine. It's not a problem. I'd already messed the lap up anyway. I'm not supposed to do that. I want current. There we go. That's what I want this lap. So I've just, I've just been playing around at the bottom with the... Uh, what's it called? Sidekick. The Sidekick app that I use. Race Essential Sidekick. So, oddly enough, that spin was the first spin I've had. In that's, it's been three laps, and I was waiting for it to happen on Patreon. It did not. Or on the Patreon recording, the practice laps, it did not. Instead, it's happened here, which is absolutely fine. It just shows how nice this car is. That the only the only reason I, I spun it there is because I was just going a little bit too fast, and I just mess that up that was completely driver error and it could have been easily easily avoided um, there's, there's just not there isn't much to say about this car aside from praise yes it's a little bit bland inside but so I think that that's a, a good thing and of course it is the 1990s as well so we have to bear that in mind but I, I think nowadays there's, there's too much inside cars so it's really nice to see a car that doesn't have all of that uh, and it's just very driver focused very simple everything you need is there that's that's the thing every single thing that you need is there come on come on come on come on come on with the power car handles pretty much every corner as you would expect you have that slight amount of oversteer you can always feel that slight amount of oversteer but there's nothing out of you nothing that's going to snap on you nothing that's uh what's the right term for it nothing too over exaggerated everything on the car feels natural everything on the car feels like it's doing exactly what you've told it to do at all times even that slide there it's the, the car is just the way the way the car responded through that for me was oh you've told me to do that okay i'm doing that and now you're telling me to do this okay not a problem i'm going to do this for you that's how easy this car is to drive and how perfect i'll be honest i've I drove the other BMW, the newer M3, in a sense, of course, uh, not liked it at all. Not liked it one bit. Uh, th this one, though, I, I've not driven this much before th Before this. This is probably the most I've, dr I've uh, driven this car in one go, which is, I think now, quite regretful. 
I should have I should have done many more laps with this car. I'm driving it in silver, which is interesting. I've, I tend not to drive cars in silver, but uh, there you go. So we've had a spin. We've probably lost uh, a fair amount of time with the spin. So we're going to see what kind of lap time comes up at the start. Now, I'm not all too confident on this one corner right now. I'm, I'm still not two laps. I've not been able to really get get up to speed with the corner, unfortunately. So I feel like I am always going to lose time in that in that corner in that set. But not sure why I didn't go into gear there. Amazingly. Gaining time, even though it didn't go into gear. Oh, now I'm going to lose time all the way over here because that was a bad line, and uh, there we go. Wheels on this car are quite nice. 225, 225, 45s, ZR16s both front and rear so this isn't one of those cars that because it's a rear wheel drive it has wider tyres on the rear this was before that same size tyres all the way around which is absolutely fine I am using the street tyres not uh, not anything else so this is going to be one of the streets oh estimated 855 854 that's good right now this is a 90s car be careful treat it with respect there we go. There is no ABS on this car uh, at the moment. I've switched it off. As you can see, there's actually the the red light is is on to to show that. So let's see what the next lap brings. A much cleaner entry, that's for sure. Much cleaner entry into that. trying to make use of the entire track as best as I can without losing any time and trying not to obviously overcook it and take too much off the track that would be a disaster now the problem is I think at points I have done the absolute best I am going to be able to on this track uh, with with only what this is the fourth lap now so it is going to be interesting we're not going to be seeing a whole bunch of purples unfortunately let's see how that handles it because that felt a lot faster that was a lot faster not half a second Half a second is half a second at the end of the day. Now, just got to be careful here. There we go. Much, much nicer. That is how I like to take that corner. Admittedly, I could probably go just a tad wider, but that's okay. I'm, I'm fairly happy with how that has panned out. And I'm fairly happy with how that panned out as well, because I think that was probably the fastest that was ever going to happen. I keep touching that. That inside curb is a bad thing to touch bounces your car you do not want to bounce your car on that but sometimes you just end up touching that inside curb just slightly you're trying to get as close as you can to the inside and you just end up cutting it by a few inches and you realize that you'd rather instead of cutting it by a few inches what you really need to do is you need to then cut it massively 
because if you were to do that by just a few inches it's just going to bounce the wheel out so instead you have to go over it and by going over it you're saving yourself the the hassle right let's get this correct this time and that is how you get it correct and you can see unlike the ktm crossbow shifting the gears on this is is a lot it's more it's a much more smoother experience you shift the gears in the crossbow r and you sort of always worried oh what's going to happen as soon as i get into the next gear this one is just like it's fine it is absolutely fine looks like i'm still setting purples so i am still improving with this car i've got that one black sector for some reason not sure what that is all about and obviously on the semi slicks this car will do even better but we are trying to try we're trying to stick with street tires where we can and it just goes to show um i mean i would i would like to try this car on semi six i might uh, off camera just to um, just just to see what kind of laptop it can produce see how it would compare for example to, to the KTM Crossbow. Obviously the KTM Crossbow is a much more capable vehicle and a much more track day oriented and track focused vehicle. That's was slow. I do not even have to look at the Delta to know that was slow. You just in this car you do feel once you've once you've done it once you feel what is fast and what is slow. So you know immediately when you've when you've overcooked it. You know immediately where where you've lost time. I think that's brilliant. This car is so it gives you so much information just from just from the way it feels. Because there's no dampening on the car. There's no there's no sense of making it a. Uh, Make it an easy drive, an easy car for anybody to get in and drive really quickly. It just is a car you can get in and drive really quickly and feel every part of that drive and know where you are going to gain and lose time. Which I think is, is just brilliant. Absolutely 100% brilliant. I always like cutting these curves. It's great to do that. See, even on that corner, it was just so easy to say, right, I know where the car's going to end up going. I'm going to push it where I need it to go. Just there, that was a slight issue. I touched that inside kerb once again on the, on the right-hand side, and that just caused me to, to bounce out a little bit away from where I wanted to be but overall I'm not setting the purples at the moment I felt like I did have that better on the last lap but it's okay I might set a couple of purples maybe in this sector maybe slightly better through there. Ever so slightly mind you I went on the grass so that probably ruined it. Right. As not to mess this up, as he's about to mess it up. There we go. This is what I mean, I'm not comfortable with that corner. I am not comfortable with that corner at all. And it's actually it's actually gone and messed up my lap time. I'm going to actually count that one because, well, I think that lap time would have counted anyway. I did not gain any time by going out there. I definitely, definitely lost time. Right, let's have some gaining all the way down the straights, perhaps. Come on. 
So we're looking at about 20 seconds faster. I was hoping for 30 seconds, 25, 30 seconds, as I said. Um, so, well, that's that. This is not as fast as I thought it was. I still have time, I think, that I can take and grab and uh, improve upon. I am going to try a third lap. I know I've done that in a few cars now, but I, I am going to try a, a third lap in this. And whether this is a better lap or not, it is... Well, we'll, we'll just have to see, won't we? Okay, that is interesting. That was a purple. Eight thirty-four four th eight forty-three four three is what I set right there. Let's see what I can do to improve from that. Probably not much. trying to push the car maybe slightly beyond its limits which is not a good thing but I want to see whether it's capable I might lose a bit of time here and there but I want to see what it's capable of doing now that's gone okay I'm going to abandon that lap 8.43.43 that is going to actually come up uh, on screen now so Thank you very much for watching. Um, this, that slips in quite nicely into second place, but unfortunately, obviously, it is going to fall down the order as other cars come along. Nice to see it actually into the eight minutes, though. So that's great. Uh, but, yeah, that's, that's not too bad. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to hit the like button if you like this video. Subscribe to the channel for more videos on... On a set of course, leave a comment in the comments box below and let me know what you think. Don't forget to support me on Patreon if you can do so. www.patreon.com slash ecgadgets. Your support would be massively appreciated. It would really, really help me out. And also, you can find me on social media at ecgadgetslp for both Twitter and Instagram. Final thoughts on this car? It's a great car. Do not over push the car, that's important. If you if you push it too hard, then you're going to run into then you're going to run into trouble. But I certainly need to have more that I can get out of this car. I think I've got another 10 seconds that I can grab out of that car. I definitely think I've got another 10 seconds I can grab out of the car. In fact, I've just set a purple right there. So there you go. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, as I said, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time, and in the next video, I'm probably going to be taking ooh, an Audi, S, uh, Audi S1, I think we've got an Audi S1, we'll take the Audi S1, something that has been requested by, by Leo, so let's see what the Audi S1 can do, I'll see you then.